The most powerful person in the courtroom is the prosecutor. It's not the judge. We're used to thinking about the justice system as a triangle where you have the prosecutor and the defense lawyer down here, and they're on an equal playing field. And then it's the judge who's up here at the top of the triangle. But in fact, since the 1980s, we've really seen the balance of power shift in the American courtroom. And so prosecutors are now up here alongside the judge, and in a lot of ways, they have power instead of the judge. So one day I was in this specialized gun court in Brooklyn and the guy who was facing charges was this 19 year old. Since he'd been charged with this weapon, he'd gone to a special program, he was getting his GED and the judge wanted to let him off the hook. So she said to the prosecutor, can you lower these charges from a felony to a misdemeanor? Because I really don't want to send this guy to prison. And the prosecutor said, sorry, no. And so the judge didn't have any choice. He ended up going to jail. And that, I think, really demonstrates how it's prosecutors, not judges, who are making these key decisions in the courtroom. So in the 1980s in the United States, there was a crime wave. This nation has been plagued by an outbreak of crime unparalleled. It's the rising tide of crime in our town. It has done such damage to Americans' traditional sense of personal security. People were worried about crime and they wanted to increase punishments. One of the main tools that state legislatures used to do that were mandatory minimum sentences. The person who gets to decide what the charges are in a criminal case, that person is the prosecutor. Once you have charges in place, then prosecutors almost always in our court system try to negotiate a plea bargain. They're doing that to avoid a trial. Trials are really time consuming, they're labor intensive, and so at this point in our system, more than 95% of convictions are obtained through plea bargains. And again, the person who has the most say and power over a plea bargain, that person is the prosecutor. The judge has to basically rubber stamp the deal at the end. But the person who decides what charges to bring and then decides what deal to offer based on those charges, every time it's the prosecutor. When prosecutors bring charges, if they charge the maximum they can, if they throw the book at you, then they have more leverage over you to persuade you to take a deal. So think about it. If you know that you did something wrong and if you dare to go to trial, you could face 10 or 20 years in prison. But if you take the deal, then maybe you'll only go to jail for a year, maybe not at all. Think how much incentive you have to take that deal. We need to reform the criminal justice system because people change and cities change and systems sometimes need to change. Because prosecutors have so much power, there has been a social movement that's really arisen around the country to elect a new kind of district attorney. The idea here is to harness all of that power to try to reduce mass incarceration instead of constantly ratcheting up punishment. We've seen people like that elected as DA in cities like Philadelphia and Chicago, in Orlando, Florida, in Boston. And if you care about criminal justice reform right now, it's really important to remember that you, the voter, have the power to elect your local DA. And so you should think about whether your district attorney reflects the values you want for your community.